Hello everyone and welcome back to Private Pilot Ground School. I'm Sergey, and in this video we'll be talking about airplane parts, where they are on the airplane and what do they do. The major parts of an airplane are the propeller, the engine cowling, the wings, fuselage, the empennage or tail, and the landing gear. The propeller is self-explanatory. It propels the airplane through the air. And once we talk about aerodynamics, you'll see how it actually works and how it actually provides thrust. The engine cowling is where the engine's located. And the cowling is kind of like a hood for your car and it's there for aerodynamics and it's also there to protect the engine against the outside elements. The fuselage is the main part of the airplane. This is where you will sit, this is where all the baggage goes, it's, it's for passengers and for cargo. That's the main body of the airplane. The empennage is the tail section of the airplane, and we'll talk about that in just a little bit. The wings provide lift for the airplane, and they also serve as fuel tanks, and you can see there are two caps on the top for fueling. And one final very important part of the airplane is the landing gear. It can be either tricycle, or it can be tailwheel. Before we go further, we need to talk about the center of gravity. If I take this pen here, I can balance it in one spot on my finger. And the airplane has the same sort of balancing point, and we call that the center of gravity. So the airplane would balance on that point if it was suspended in air. And that's really important for this next part. The airplane has three axes that run through the center of gravity. And it can rotate around any one of those to either turn or climb, descend, we have a longitudinal axis, and that runs through the center of gravity from the nose to the tail. The lateral axis goes from wingtip to wingtip through the center of gravity. And finally, the axis that passes vertically through the center of gravity is called the vertical axis, and they're all at 90 degrees to each other. Now that we know the axes of the airplane, we can talk about how it actually moves. On each wing, we have ailerons and they allow the airplane to turn or roll around the longitudinal axis. And we call this motion rolling or banking. This is rolling left and right. It's kind of like turning, but we call it rolling or banking. The next is the empennage or the tail. We have a horizontal stabilizer and a vertical stabilizer. They're like fins on an arrow and they stabilize the airplane so it doesn't wobble as it flies. The horizontal stabilizer has what we call an elevator and it rotates the airplane around the lateral axis so the nose pitches up and down. On the vertical stabilizer we have the rudder and that allows the airplane to yaw around the vertical axis. It doesn't turn the airplane but it allows it to continue going straight with the nose pointed in a different direction. That might seem useless but just wait until we talk about crosswind landings. So the three flight controls we talked about are called the primary flight controls. You absolutely need them in order to fly the airplane. So the ailerons help with bank or roll, the elevator pitches the nose up and down, and the rudder yaws the airplane left and right. Now let's talk about secondary flight controls. You might have some on your airplanes, but some you might not. Flaps are located on the inside of the wing, and they come down. They create lift and drag, and they slow the airplane down, and they also allow a steeper descent angle without the airplane speeding up. And they are usually in the down position for landing. Slats are something that you probably won't see for a while until you fly much faster airplanes. But they're on the front of the wing and they come out forward. They create more curvature on the wing and they provide more lift at slower speeds. Spoilers are typically found on airliners and military jets. And they come up on top of the wing. They reduce lift and help the airplane descend quickly or help reduce the lift once the airplane gets on the ground to help it slow down. And finally, trim. When you're flying an airplane, you have to keep constant pressure on the flight controls in order for the airplane to do what you want it to do. If you learn how to use trim, you'll be able to pretty much let go of the flight controls and the airplane will keep doing what it was doing when you trimmed it. And that's because trim relieves that need for you to maintain constant control pressures. The way it works is we have little tabs on the aileron and rudder and they can be adjusted on the ground only by a mechanic. We also have an elevator trim tab and you can control that by a little control wheel that's located in the cockpit 
and it moves a little tab on the elevator that sticks out into the airflow and helps the elevator do its job more efficiently. This is one of the most important secondary flight controls that you will have access to. Make sure you practice trimming the airplane, that way you can reduce your workload and flying can be a lot more enjoyable. And I think that covers the main sections of the airplane and a couple flight controls. Come back and see the engine video where we'll talk about some engine components and then watch the aerodynamics video to see how some of these flight controls actually work based on aerodynamics. If there are things that didn't make sense that I mentioned, please leave a comment or a question in the comment box below. And while you're down there, check out the description box. There will be a link to the FAA Pilot Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge uh, chapter where they talk about the flight controls in a lot more detail than I covered. And that's about it. Until next time, have fun, fly safe, and always keep learning. See you next time.